Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Well, good morning and welcome to our service today. And we come to the sixth Sunday. And in some ways, we are getting ready for Pentecost. On Thursday is the day of ascension, the day we remember that Christ rose up into the clouds and left his disciples. So we come to this day to talk about what was Jesus really doing for 40 days and how does it impact on us? Those who love me will keep my word, Jesus promises. And my Father will love them. We will come to them and make our home with them. Let's begin by bringing our hearts and our minds to God in prayer. Let's pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us come now to rejoice and worship God in the words of the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the colic prayer for this service. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you joys beyond our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love for you that, loving you above all else, we may obtain your promises that exceed all we can desire. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. The first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17, beginning at verse 22. Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, People of Athens, I see that every one of you are very religious. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship. And this is what I am going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath 
and everything else. For one man he made all the nations, that they should inhabit the whole earth, and he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would not seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him. Though he is not far from any one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by human design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now say Psalm 66. In the prayer book, it's on page 286. Psalm 66. We're saying verses 7 to 19. From 17 to the end. Let us say it together. O oh, bless our God, you peoples, and cause his praises to resound who has held our souls in life, who has not suffered our feet to slip. For you have proved us, O God. You have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You laid sharp torment on our loins. You let our enemies ride over our heads. We went through fire and water but you brought us out into a place of liberty. I will come into your house with burnt offerings and I will pay you my vows, the vows that opened my lips, that my mouth uttered when I was in trouble. I will offer you burnt offerings of fattened cart beasts with the sweet smoke of rams I will sacrifice a bull and the flesh of goats. Come then and hear, all you that fear God, and I will tell what he has done for me. I called to him with my mouth, and his praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished wickedness in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me, but God has heard me. He has heeded the voice of my prayer. Praise be to God, who has not turned back my prayer or my, his steadfast love from me. The second reading is from the first letter of Peter, chapter 3, beginning at verse 8. Finally, all of you, be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. They must turn from evil and do good. 
They must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ear are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. But in your heart, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Keep a clear conscience so that those who speak malicious against you, your good behaviour in Christ, may be ashamed of their slander. For it is better, if it is God's will, to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. After being made alive, he went and made proclamation to the imprisoned spirits, to those who were disobedient long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. In it only a few people, eight in all, were saved through water. And this water symbolises baptism that now saves you also. Not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience towards God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at God's right hand with angels, authorities and powers in submission to him. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John, chapter 14, beginning at the 15th verse. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will be not see me anymore. But you will see me because I live. You also will live. On that day, you will realise that I am in the far, my Father and you are in me and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father and I too will love them and show myself to them. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my lips and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our God and Redeemer. Amen. We come to this time where 
what was Jesus doing for 40 days? I keep asking that question because I think we need to remember. And when we look at the readings, we have to remember these readings were chosen for this period for a purpose. Jesus, for 40 days, wasn't on a vacation before he started his full-time job in heaven. He wasn't taking a break or it wasn't just a long goodbye. Jesus had a purpose for those 40 days. And for me, it was to prepare the disciples to take what he had already given them, but to see it in the light of his resurrection and be prepared to live it in their own lives. So when we look at the readings, we need to remember that when we read these readings, it's what are we trying to get out of them to help us move on in our Christian walk? Peter tells his readers that they have to do what I think is really a hard, even impossible act. He tells them firstly that they've got to be like-minded. Now, we understand what he's saying, but has anyone ever been in a community or a location where everybody is like-minded? There's always someone with a different thought, a different view, and at times those different ideas and thoughts will cause factions and stresses. So first he's asking them to be like-minded. Not only that, he's then also asking them to act and live good lives even in the world that is evil. And even when they are, are attacked by evil, they cannot retaliate in evil. They have to do good. They have to live out this, this idea of what God is calling them to and why and how do they do this? And Peter's response is, well, you do it, you focus on Jesus. You don't do it just because God asked you. If you're struggling, if you want to know what to do, look at Jesus. Now, again, we did not have the New Testament. You couldn't go and read the gospel story. So if he's telling them to look at Jesus, He's not talking about a passage in a Bible. He's talking about Jesus. But Jesus wasn't there. Another thing that I find really interesting with what Peter writes is that he said, be prepared to give a testimony for your behaviour. Peter tells them that they should act good even in the sight of bad to the point where the person who's attacking them will feel ashamed of the way they've acted. So someone comes and attacks me and I resort with love, kindness, generosity, understanding. They get angry, they get abusive. After a while, they settle down and then they feel ashamed of the way they've talked to me. Now we say, that's it, done the right thing. But Peter says, no, no, be ready to give a testimony. Don't just let it be, oh, that man did a great thing. He treated me nicely. We are supposed to use those opportunities to then go and say, that is because of my faith. That is because of my relationship with God. If you are blessed by my reaction, then you are blessed by my God. Be ready to give a testimony. In all this, he reminds them that God is watching. God is not oblivious to what's happening. And he says that part, even if you should suffer for doing, or for doing good, if it is God's will. So there's a point at which Peter's also saying that God may actually put bad things in your way but maybe there's a purpose in it, a purpose for us. Maybe a purpose for the person who we have a problem with, who has a problem with us. I still believe that this is a problem that Peter is asking his readers to live a life which is really against culture, to give up basically, I believe, their human rights. We move to the gospel and we see Jesus in many ways 
asking the same thing. Do good if you love me. So Jesus is saying that their goodness should be driven out of their love for him, not out of their love for the world, not out of love for justice, not out of love for anything else, but if they love him, do good. But he understands that that's great. Great to ask us to do these good things, but what about you? You're going. You're done. It's easy for you. And he says, I'm not going to leave you as an orphan. I'm going to send you somebody else. And I find this really interesting. He doesn't say I'm going to send an object. I'm going to send a product. Or he says, I'm sending a person. The Holy Spirit is a person. Now, we know that the Holy Spirit's a person, but he then says that person will be with you, that person will be in you. Now, this verges on me of Laura sort of like saying possession. Let God possess you. Now, I don't know about you, but this is where I start thinking my faith a bit differently. Firstly, it's easy to believe that the Holy Spirit is like a gas, a vapour all around me, like oxygen. I breathe it in, I breathe it out. But when I think of the Holy Spirit as a person and that person is inside me, that becomes a bit freaky. But there's a different thing. If I believe that the Holy Spirit is a person who's living in me, there is a point where I'm having a relationship with it. It's not just something that is around me, guiding or directing me. It's something that is communicating with me. And Jesus says in the gospel today that not only will you communicate with the Holy Spirit, but through the Holy Spirit, you will communicate with me. And as you communicate with me, you will also communicate with the Father. That's an amazing thought, but again, if I look at the realistic fact of that, how many of us would say we've ever talked to Jesus? Now, I, I say that because even though prayer is talking, there's a difference between talking to somebody you think might be listening, like a person eavesdropping on the other side of a wall, or that somebody might hear something that I say and listen to it, there's a different thing to believe that that person is talking to you and you are talking to them. That in my prayers, I'm not just talking to the space, I am actually talking to Jesus. In this relationship, when I see the Holy Spirit as my partner inside me, and I put that partnership as the importance of my life decisions, what we talk about is more important than what I talk to other people about. When I get angry with someone, I talk to the Holy Spirit. I try to do it before I talk to the person. I struggle at times to let my emotions go backwards and talk to the Holy Spirit first I tend to talk to the person first and afterwards do regretful conversation with the Holy Spirit. So here I am, someone comes at me, I'm angry. I sit there and say to the Holy Spirit, what do I do? This person's yelling at me. I want to yell back. I then listen to see what the Holy Spirit says. Don't react in like. When we are talking about what the Bible says, we have to understand when Peter was writing his letter, he was not talking about going and looking for guidance out of a book. He was talking about getting guidance from something that is inside them. The Bible was already inside them if they had accepted God and they had accepted the Holy Spirit. If they were built on that relationship that they had accepted in the Holy Spirit, then the Holy Spirit was going to give them a relationship and connectedness to God. Is that how we see our relationship with God? Have I 
allowed the Holy Spirit to come inside me? Is it a person living in with side me, with me, who I talk to and have a relationship with? And does that person allow me to see Jesus and talk to Jesus and talk to God? If you're listening to this and you are saying, that's not how I see God. What would it mean to change the way we see God and to live that way? If you're listening to me and you say, that's already what I've got, then you understand what I'm saying. Jesus was helping to prepare them for the coming of the Holy Spirit into their lives and their hearts. He was giving them knowledge and information, but even Jesus knew that the disciples would not truly understand what he said until their relationship with the Holy Spirit started at Pentecost. Are we, have we accepted the Holy Spirit? On Pentecost, we come to remember the day we opened our hearts to accept the Holy Spirit into our lives and into our hearts as a partner with us. If this is something new to you, then this is a time of preparation. So maybe at Pentecost, you might like to take that step and to make that move, to change that relationship that you have with God and make it more deeper. We are all on our journey. And in that journey, we will hopefully become like-minded. And in that like-mindedness, we will support each other in our journeys. Amen. We come now to reaffirm our understanding of God through the creed. Let us affirm our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now pray for the world, the church, and for ourselves. At the end of each prayer, I will say, loving God, in your mercy, the response is, hear our prayer. God of earth and heaven, we give you thanks and praise that you listen when we call to you. Hear the prayers we bring for your people. 
We give you thanks and praise for the beauty of the world that you have made, for the intricate detail and design of each interlocking part. We pray for the world, for respect for its creatures, for wide stewardship of its resources, for just sharing of its bounty. Loving God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks and praise for the diversity and richness of human life for the creative and sustaining power of human mind and spirit. We pray for the nations. We pray for governments as they continue to work with the impact of the virus on their societies, making decisions about how to engage with social interaction. Pray for all the people as they try to understand and live. We pray for peace and goodwill among the peoples, for wise and just government, for food for the hungry and shelter for the homeless. Loving God in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks and praise for your son, our saviour, whom you sent to live among us and have raised from death to life. We pray for the church, for a spirit of repentance, of faithfulness and obedience, for power to proclaim your gospel in sacrament, deed and word. Loving God in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we bring our parish to, your, to you, praising you for all that you have done with us and through us. We bring our parish prayer. Renew in us, O God, the zeal for your love. Let our parish come alive with the power of your spirit. Where we have failed, forgive us. Where we have persevered, encourage us. Where we are in doubt, direct us. Help us to see new opportunities for witness and service for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Loving God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks and praise that you are the centre and source of our being, the provider of all we have to share. We pray for this community, for compassion, for the vulnerable, for acceptance for the outcast, for relationships of unselfishness, forgiveness, understanding, and love. Loving God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks and praise that throughout the ages you have loved your people, caring for them in times of trouble and despair. We pray for all in need, for consolation, for the sad for companionship, for the lonely, for comfort for those who are in pain and strength for all who are for them, who care for them. We remember those in our, we carry in our hearts, our family and friends. We bring to you those who have asked for our spare prayers. For Brett, Bill Henderson, Damien Vale, Patricia McMullen, Duncan Pegg, Kenneth Tordovan, 
Wendy Lindsay, Oliver, Michelle Doherty, Linda, Nola. Loving God in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks and praise that you prepare a dwelling place for all who love you and offer your children the joys of everlasting life. We remember your faithful servants of every age. We remember those of our community whose anniversary of death fall this week. For Brian Perrin, Ellen Ellis, John Tennyson, Beryl Corr, Cyril Biggins, Ian Frame, Florence Graham, Ellen Spiller, William Hilton, Mavis Conway, Marjorie Blake, Liz Best. Help us to follow their example, that loving you, we may set aside all that is displeasing in your eyes. Keep your commandments and grow in your ways. With all your saints, bring us home to your eternal presence, that we may live forever in you and with you. God of earth and heaven, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Accept our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who not heart in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us now prepare for our confession through the prayer of approach. We do not presume to come to your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may ever more dwell in him and he in us. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been offered for us. Therefore, we come to celebrate the festival. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith with a sincere and a true heart. Merciful God, our maker and our judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We now have the greeting of peace. As we have heard and as we have prayed, we have opened ourselves that we may know God's presence in our hearts. We are the body of Christ. The Spirit is with us. 
Christ is risen. Hallelujah. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Please share it from a distance. As we prepare to come to the table, those of you who are watching the service, I remind you that on the pattern is a low piece of bread for you. And as I drink the chalice, I drink for all of us. And we are united in that act. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Oh, glory and honour be yours, always and everywhere. Mighty creator, ever-living God, we give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who, by the power of your spirit, was born of Mary and lived as one of us. He is the true Paschal Lamb who was offered for us and has taken away the sins of the world. And now we give you thanks that you raised him in triumph from the dead. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, has restored us to eternal life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Zephyr in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Zephyr in the highest. Please be seated, you Neil. Holy and gracious God, all creation rightly gives you praise. All life, all holiness comes from you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, whom you sent to share our human nature, to
to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. Hear us, merciful Lord. Through Christ, accept our sacrifice of praise and by the power of your word and Holy Spirit, sanctify this bread and wine that we who share in this holy sacrament may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. Who, when his hour had come, on the night before he went up to the cross to make full atonement for the sins of the whole world, offering once for all his one sacrifice of himself, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and again giving you thanks. Gave it to his disciples saying, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, in obedience to his command, we commemorate and celebrate his saving passion and death, his mighty resurrection and ascension into heaven. And we eagerly await his coming again in glory. We thank you that by your grace alone you have accepted us in Christ. And here we offer a spiritual sacrifice, holy and acceptable in your sight. Through Christ, receive this our duty and service. And grant that we, who eat and drink these holy gifts, may by your Holy Spirit be one body in Christ and serve you in unity and peace. In your grace and mercy, bring us to the joy of your eternal kingdom with all the company of the redeemed. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Eternal, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours forever and ever. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us your peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us. Feed on him in our hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen.
just keep me in a turn of lock on you. The blood of Christ keep me in a turn of lock on you. Body of Christ, keep you in eternal life. Body of Christ, keep you in eternal life. The blood of Christ, keep you in eternal life. Let us pray. Most glorious Lord of life, we thank you that you nourish us in these Easter mysteries. Fill us with the spirit of love and unite us in faith that we may witness to the resurrection, show your glory to all the world. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Thank you for being here today and for this opportunity to share our relationship with God in communion. And even if you are watching or you are still with us. I believe the Spirit of God unites us through distance, time and space. Have a God week and please be prepared for the blessing. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. He is risen, he is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, almighty God who redeemed us through the resurrection of Christ and has brought us out of slavery into everlasting freedom. Give you joy and peace in faith and bring you to your eternal inheritance. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. He is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Go in peace and joy to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Christ.